Welcome to the Newbie Real Estate Investor Podcast. Uh, I'm Jonathan Boyle, here with my co-host, Joey Chan, and today we have special guest, Charles Changwin. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, really appreciate it. Welcome to the show, Charles. It's been a long time, right? We've been yeah. setting this up, we yes. finally made it happen. Finally, finally, I can't wait for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Elizabeth's always super busy, so it's great. Yeah, yeah, this guy, it took a while to chase him down, you know, we had to, we had to kind of box him in just to get him on the show. So, thank you for being on the show, finally. Absolutely. My first question is, before you got into real estate, before you were Mr. Elizabeth, what did you do? What were you doing before you got into So that's a great question. Let me talk a little bit about my growing up. Okay. So like that, you guys could understand where I was at. As I was growing up, I was always taught from a very young age the value of a dollar. So for example, my mother would buy us, me and my sister, uh, she would buy us a Nintendo, but she wouldn't buy us video games. So basically, my grandfather owned a soccer team, and I would go with him on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, see the guys practice or play games. And I would actually collect cans, and I would get five cents for every single can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, I didn't even let the guys finish their drinks, and I was like, I need that, you know, I need that. That's, <laughs> that's how, uh, how, that's how ambitious I was, you know, because I wanted my, you know, Super Mario game. That's where it all started. By the age of 13, you know, I was, maybe like around 5'11". Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're a big kid. Yeah, <laughs> I was 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and um, I told one of the guys that I knew very close, he was um, a master electrician. Mm -hmm. I said, can I come work with you, just help you out? Because I knew that, you know, working on these trades, there was good money. So I started that at the age of 13, of course, after school and during all my summer vacation. Yeah. That's what I would do. Then my next job was working with a master plumber. So then the following year, I did that. I worked with a master plumber now that he knew I had some type of experience mm -hmm. with the electrician. Then after that, I also felt that, you know what, while we're doing the plumbing, there was also woods that needed to be done. I didn't even know how to use, I knew how to see the tape measure, you know, count one through whatever the numbers was, but I didn't know what all the little lines were. So I said, you know, I want to learn, you know, what's carpentry, how do you fix walls, doing sheetrock and all that stuff. So then 14, 15, I started doing that as well, okay? I'm not trying to say that I worked after school throughout the whole year, yeah. but even just to show you how much of an entrepreneur I was when I was 12 years old, I used to tutor kids. And I even have that business card when I was 12, you know? I thought in those days it was cool, so I had a beeper, uh -huh. you know? And then I actually had the one that you know you can pay and you could tell the person the message and you could read the message yeah um, you know I you're 12 was... and you think you're cool when you see like you know the stock updates or you get the sports updates or you get the <laughs> weather updates and you would hear the business and i'm like oh <laughs> what's going on you know <laughs> so i thought i was cool for having that what made it even cooler was when i was 13 that i used to you know hang out with my buddies across the street his friend his dad was a cab driver but at the same time he had two cell phones now we're talking about almost 20 years ago mm -hmm. when cell phones was not a commodity like it is today and for him to have not one but two yeah that's what intrigued me i said what in the world does this guy do and his explanation to me was like i buy one house i'll refinance it i take that money and i buy two more I refinance those and I buy two more off of each one. So he built his little empire from one house. And I was like, you know, in those days I was like, but this doesn't even make sense. Mm. Why would you get yourself into debt, then expand that debt, then do the same process over and you went from let's say 100,000 of debt to like 400,000 like that. Right. I was like, how does this make sense? Well, I didn't understand, but I wanted to learn that. Answer. And he wasn't, you know, Spanish guy, Dominican guy. He said, you know what, Charlie, you want to learn? I'm going to teach you. But first, what you need to do is learn how to answer phone calls. You need to learn how to rent apartments. And I was like, cool, you know. And um, earlier on, I learned that if money drives you, you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. You should be able to do this without needing to get paid. So the guy says to me, Oh, you know what? I'll start you out at $2 an hour. And I was like, all right. Because I knew <laughs> that his wife cooks good. So, so I was like, while I'm there, 
I could get fed all the time. The way he said his heart is not through the wallet. He's through the, through the belly. belly. <laughs> I said, you know what? Cool, let's do it. The day that I told him, I said, you know that I'm good. Let's make it happen. He says, okay, the phone calls. I mean, the job is, starts now. Yeah. His phone starts ringing. He's like, here, you're going to answer it. I was like, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. He's like, well, ask him the common questions. What's your name? And, you know, it's more likely with Spanish people calling. I'm bilingual. I would say, hey, what's your name? And then, and then I get their name. Like, let's say it's Maria. And then I was like, okay, now what? He's like, <laughs> say, what do you need? You know, how many bedrooms are you looking for? Yeah. And then um, you find out what the answer is. And then he says, your next question is, find out how many people in total are, are they? You know, you don't want to discriminate, but you want to have the total amount. So if it's four adults, two kids, mm -hmm. they would sell you six. But sometimes Spanish folks understand that question as, oh yeah, we're four adults and two kids. So you still get the answer you want. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, all right, now what? He's like, so now tell them the inventory we got. Mm -hmm. And that's the way when by the second or third day, I had his, I was his organizer. I got the calls, I set up the, the appointment. One day, um, it was from five to eight. He's like, Charlie, I need an appointment. Just set up from five to eight. I don't care if they're back to back. If they're two, three family at the same time, this is what I need you to do. Perfect. Three days into the job. Friday comes along, and mind you, this guy had uh, six properties, maybe had like 20 units, had like maybe seven vacancies. Wow. These are properties he just bought. And this is, mind you, this is all in New York. I was born and raised in New York, so oh, this is wow. where, okay. yeah, this is where I was renting. So in those days, a two bedroom was like twelve to fourteen hundred. Mind you, twenty years back, twelve to fourteen hundred. A three bedroom was like sixteen to eighteen, and um, a four bedroom was two thousand to twenty three hundred. And he had like mixed and variety of all that. So okay, we rented it out. And in those days, that's when I first learned. Well, I was doing putting a bandit sign, not knowing that's what it was called. Right. You know, because the closer you live to the train, the higher property values you have. So what we used to do, we used to put them right before the trains. Like this guy literally told me what guerrilla marketing was. Mm. He's like, you want people to know what you're doing? Like you stand in front of the train station, you know, you hold that sign, you give out business cards. And, and mind you, he had plain business cards yeah. that I put my name and his telephone number or the telephone number from the house. It was so crazy because this guy even used to make me charge him a realty fee. And we weren't even realtors because <laughs> the people, people were like, how many, how many um, deposits is it? I said, so it's one month's rent, a month security, and a month real estate. They're like, man, that's a lot of money, you know, in yeah. those days to come in with. Right. And I said, yeah, I'm sorry, this is what it is. Oh, you know, man. they gotta pay me, you know, but I didn't know what that was. <laughs> All right, long story short, first week comes along, and he's like, um, Charlie, it's time for me to pay you. So he pays me for the hours that I was there, and you know, I only worked maybe like three, four hours, during the week, uh, on weekends, I was working. Um, I would get there early morning because Saturday and Sundays was the busiest days. And learning the business, the 15th to the 20th, mm -hmm. phones ring a lot. But when it's the 25th to the 30th, phones are really, you know, blowing up. So I was there at the property. He says, Charlie, it's time to pay you. When he paid me, I think it was like 40 something dollars for my salary. Mm -hmm. But then he gives me, and he's like, oh, and this is for you renting apartments. I rented like three apartments in a matter of like a week and a half. He's like, I haven't been able to do this this quick. And then he gives me 2,500. Yeah, wow. Mind you, kid, 14 years old. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, 2,500, I was like, wow. and I was like, and there's still like three, four more apartments to rent. Yeah. <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, I'm about to really make some serious money. <laughs> and that's what intrigued me to do real estate. I had the background of the electrical, mm -hmm. the plumbing, the carpentry. You know, I'm not gonna say that I had it easy when I was learning because I got treated like a slave. Mm. And this is what some people that get into the business think that it's not gonna happen to them. They think that they're gonna get in, you know, your hands are nice and clean, you're not gonna get cut, but you know, they forgot about my age. They just saw, oh, this is a big boy, you know, he's strong. Yeah. And it used to be like, okay, um, 80 she rocks, you bring them upstairs. And I was by myself. Yeah. So just for me not wanting to lose the opportunity, right. because you couldn't get a job in those days till you're at least 16. Right. Yeah. You know, and then with, I mean, 17 with parental um, permission. Yeah, permission. 
and I was like, oh man, I gotta do this. I gotta prove these guys right, you know? I would bring it, I would be tired. And then the guy's like, oh yeah, you see those 100 cases of tiles? Yeah, those go up as well. And I go up and you know, and I'm trying to be like Superman, even though I'm dying inside, yeah. bringing up two cases at a time. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> Bringing it up. And then I would always be like, okay, what else, what else, what else? And like the guy in his head was like, uh, <laughs> all right, you know what? Now we're gonna start demoing. And you know, and it's like, I learned afterwards that I'm killing myself and the guy used to go home, take a nap, come back. Instead of, you know, yeah. what I do with my workers nowadays, I show up in the morning, I set them up, I make sure that they got everything, tools, material, make sure everything is in order. From that, those experiences taught me the hard way to how I want to be able to treat my guy to where they're at right now. It's even funny because when I was 13, now that I'm just remembering these, the electrician, because I said to him, I was like, look, I'm working with you almost from eight in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, yeah. hauling material with you. Like, when are you gonna pay me? So the guy gives me a $200, um, $200 for the whole month. So then I showed my mother, I was like, oh, look what I made. But the thing that I didn't like was the guy says to me, and that's that I don't take taxes off from you. Mind you, how many hours did I put in? I was getting paid like almost 50 cents an hour if you yeah. look at it that way, you right, know? Right. So my mother says to, him, to me, she's like, Charlie, number one, the lesson is he gave you the opportunity and you don't need money if that's where you really want it to be. You always take the opportunity, forgetting if there's gonna be a benefit on monetary for you, no problem. Because number two, by him telling you that he, he luckily he didn't take away the, ta the taxes, means that he's in more desperate need of money than you needed to be. So she's like, you know what you need to say now? And that's when she started teaching me my value. She said, you get those $200, when you see him on Monday, you give it back to him and you say, thank you for the opportunity. And then she's like, and now you could go work somewhere else because you gained what you needed from him. Funny story, I met the guy like 10 years ago, still working, you know, mm -hmm. struggling, Same. Same. hasn't advanced, still lives in a room, you know? So it's like, when my mother saw me, she's like, you see, now he could be your employee based on how he was treating you in those days. Yeah. And she's like, and I know you're not going to treat him the way he treated you. That was something that I definitely wanted to share that, what, what that was. So as, as we were progressing, now that I got all this education, um, we were going to church and we met a guy by the name of Willie. And we're, dry, we're walking down the, down the streets and we see Willie clearing out a whole entire house. We're like, hey, Willie, what you doing? He's like, man, this guy just bought this. And it was a hoarded house. Like, there was garbage. He had like four containers emptying it out all by himself. He's like, look, I'm cleaning it out, but I know he's going to sell it. And that was like an off-market deal that now I know it's an off-market deal. Right. But in those days, I didn't, no sign, no nothing. So Willie says to me, he's like, look, he's going to sell it. I think he's going to let it go for like 100000 Mind you, this is Junction Boulevard um, in New York, in Queens, Jackson Heights. I told my mother, I was like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. I could do this. You know, like mm -hmm. I felt that confident. But that's where it goes, um, case in point, it's like, and this is why a lot of people that are watching this video, you should always try to get a coach, some sort of mentor, some person that is in the business that can guide you. Why? Because we ended up buying the property, 100000 it was a slam dunk of a deal, because I'm about to tell you how much we sold it for. But we started fixing bathrooms, we started fixing uh, walls. How old were you, by the way? That's I was... Uh, 15, okay. 15 when I bought that one. So basically my mother bought it, but based on me giving her the push, like I got this, I yeah. could definitely do this. Mm -hmm. And she saw me struggling, but she also saw me like, I was confident, I know the two by fours, I know the she rock, I knew how to measure, I knew how to pass cable now, I could have done the plumbing, I could install the tubs, I could put in the diverters. She already knew that she's come to see some of the work. She saw that we put down parquet floor, you know, that was something uh, cool in those days. Um, I was putting down parquet floor. I was putting down tiles. Um, so we picked up the property. We started fixing it up. Started um, cleaning up more, you know, doing divisions, blah, blah, blah. But after we finished it, we never did the roof. So nowadays, we know that we fix roofs first before we come down in the house. Bad storm. <laughs> the roof started leaking, the ceiling started coming down, big mess, here we go again. Um, mind you, I knew how to do the work, but I didn't have the contacts 
for where to get windows. We hired a U.S. window factory. Mm. So it was like 45 windows we paid 25000 to replace, install, yeah. you know, with capping and all that. Um, for the boilers, we paid 16000 and we went to Sears for two boilers. Um, for, um, what else did we do? Um, we technically, I thought we saved on electrical and plumbing, but that's what happens. Time is money, you know? Now we know that we hire crews, mm -hmm. but we ourselves GC it so that we make sure everything is going right, you know? Um, what else do we do? Uh, she Rock was also, you know, um, Home Depot, yeah. but same thing. I was doing the carrying, bringing them everything in, yeah. you know, working till nighttime. Um, so we finished it when it was time to rent it out. I taught my mother how to rent apartments, you know, <laughs> and we had four bedrooms, one bathroom, and we rented those out at 2,500 a pop. Wow. So How many units? Two. Two. Two units. So we had a second floor, first floor, the basement, we were going to try to legalize it to turn it into like a pizzeria shop because yeah. we had seven foot ceilings, so. but we didn't do any of that. Uh, mind you, she bought that property cash. Mm -hmm. She financed the project through a refinance that she did on a house. Uh, which was like maybe one, uh, 200, roughly 200,000. If I had to redo that whole project today with my experience, maybe I would spend 110, mm -hmm. 120, because we didn't do much when it was divisions and all that. Um, so that just goes to show how much money was wasted yeah. for not having a coach. Oh, not only that, the time to do it took us almost like nine months, 10 months, right. because it was me, it was the, the master plumber, we hired him. Mm -hmm. It was um, the master electrician and um, the carpenter that I was working for, he sent one of his other guys, so we were paying him on a daily rate, right. not on a, you know, on a contracting uh, bid. So that's what uh, we ended up doing. Kept the property for like three years. Mm -hmm. um, yes, two and a half years. Uh, we ended up selling that property for, anyone want to take a guess? 550? 600. We sold it for 865. Oh my God. Oh gosh. So that's a little treasure that we landed in. You know, but with the mortgages, the this, the pain, the other, it was like a good 470 something that my mother took home. So it was a real heyday, you know. Took that money, came out to Jersey because in those days it was getting a little bit too expensive. Um, now I'm what, 17? 18-ish years old, started buying here, bought a couple properties, but it's like a mentor once told me, it's not how long you've been doing something, but how long you've been doing it right is what matters. Yeah. You know, I could say I was a plumber for 30 years, but I just started doing it right three years. This is what matters, not the 30 that I supposedly say, you know, that want to be prideful to say that I've been doing it. Mm, After we were doing that, 2008, we know what happens there. Mm -hmm. Charlie, yeah. once again, no coach, no mentor, nobody to look towards. Um, my mother was still buying property. Um, those were the days that, you know, you could do loans, stay the docks, blah, blah, blah. Um, she bought stuff in Miami. She bought a condo on the beach. Um, she, bought, um, she bought a single family in um, this, this town called... Um, it's like 190th Street. Um, it's not Bayside. It's, um, well, anyways, it'll, the name will come to me. Uh, no, no, Miami. This is Miami now. Um, so, um, and we bought like three, four properties. She ends up losing the property in Miami. She ends up losing another one over there. Um, here in Jersey, she lost two houses. So that's what 2008 did to me, or did to us. And it's like, how do we recover now? Mm. You know, her name gets destroyed. My name was still intact because I didn't put anything on my name. Um, one thing I did do, I was able to save enough money to come buy a house over here in Rosa Park. At the age of 18, yeah. I had like $50,000 saved up. I bought my first house here. Um, then, fast forward, fast forward, I think it was 2014. I said, let me try to do a flip. Let me try to get into this business. Mm -hmm. I went out to um, Newark, 
you know, East Orange, North Borderline. And I did a flip. Took me like nine months. After paying everybody off, made like $22,000 for the whole year. Yeah. So I said to myself, I was like, you know what, real estate is really not for me. You know, so I said, you know, let me just go see what else I could do. I didn't have no clue what in the world I wanted to do in my life. So I just said to myself, and mind you, I always saw myself to be an entrepreneur, right. someone successful, someone that, you know, was always thinking outside the box, someone that never saw objection. I, I just always saw was, um, um, like there's a quote out there that says, um, I don't know how I'm going to win, but I sure do know I'm not going to lose. You know, that's what was always in my mind. Like, I don't know what the what the problem is, but I know for a fact I'm going to come out with a solution. Um, so I didn't know what to do in my life. So then I said, someone as skillful as me, like, yeah. I feel like I was, I was garbage. Yeah. So I said to myself, I said, you know what? Since I don't know what I'm going to do in my life, let me just go out to Texas, you know, because I'm a believer. Um, and I said, you know what, there's a pastor that I like, his name is John Hagen. So I said, let me, let me go by his place. Um, mind you, I have no family, no friends, nobody. So I said to myself, I said, it's just going to be me, it's going to be God, and it's going to be my health. You know, as you could tell, I'm not, I'm not in shape. So I said to myself, <laughs> let me go out there, let me go to the gym. You know, let me, let me nourish myself, not only physically, but spiritually as well. So then I go over there and then I find that good Bible-based church and I said to myself, I was like, man, you know what? I think this is the right place I could meet people. But since it was such a mega church, it's like everybody had their own um, determination. Like they came to church, they finished the sermon, boom, everybody was out. And I was like, oh man, I'm not looking for that. I was looking, you know, yeah. people that I could hang out with. Let's go play sports, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's fine. I, I, I enjoyed my time while I was there. But you know, when, you're, when you have time on your hands and you're an entrepreneur mindset, you're always looking for, what else can I do? How can I do it? And then an opportunity came, you know, uh, came How through. How old were you, by the way, at this point? This is now um, 19, 20. Okay, got it. 20, and um, I said to myself, um, an opportunity comes down, down my way and I said, billboards. And I said, oh, snap. I like that, you know, um, and it wasn't a regular billboard, but it was be, to be able to put up a digital billboard. So I said, man, I love that idea, you know, and then I was, the guy was telling you how it should be minimum eight seconds. So you get, you know, uh, try to fit at least eight, um, um, you get eight flips per minute. And then the guy's like, well, technically we only leave it seven and a half seconds. He was already showing me all the tricks, you know, yeah. so that you could get a full, every single minute you could um, sell advertisement space. So I said, okay, one property, we picked it up for like, I picked it up for like a hundred and I picked it up for 25,000, um, which had ability to convert to digital boards. And then I had another spot that I picked up and this was all in Orlando, Florida. I picked that up for like 55,000, 60,000. Mind you, these are just posts. This is nothing else. I go over there and I started renting out the space. I was getting $2,000 on each side of the board. Um, and I thought everything was good. I started filing the paperwork, got the architect, mounting it up, you know, the, the um, Dactronics and all the, you know, uh, companies that start putting up the boards for you. And um, we got into a, a fender bender, you could say, a car accident that um, we almost technically, you know, me and my mother driving. I, w I was driving and I saw the car the entire way, T-boned us. But I prepped myself, you know, when the car was T-boning us. Unfortunately to my mother, she, re she got it worse. Um, so when she got the impact of the vehicle, her head hit the steering wheel, fell back. But unfortunately with her, her um, brain fell into her, like the skull of, the, of, of her head. So it was massive pressure. So unfortunately because of all that, oh, and, and when the car hit us, threw us onto the oncoming traffic. Oh, wow. 
So we were about to get hit twice, you know. Uh, worst part of it all that was that the lady tried to flee after she hit us. So, you know, I guess it was the um, adrenaline inside of me. So after I saw that, my, my doors didn't open. I threw myself out the window. You know, that lady was also trying to recap to hit reverse and all that. And I told her, I said, I said, uh, where are you going? I said, you know what? You want to leave? Leave. But I took pictures of, of her car, of the license plate. I said, look, you're just making my case better. I could tell the cops whatever I want. And that's when she's like, oh, hold up. Let me stay. So um, got into that uh, fender bender. My mother, unfortunately, had to get um, surgery. brain surgery. Um, they cut it up, cut up the skull just so that the brain is not all tightened up. And mind you, I was back and forth, San Antonio here, because I didn't have a clue. I saw an infomercial, and this is the crazy part. I saw an infomercial of a big company organization, Fortune Builders. You guys probably know that I'm part of. And um, I was going to go to it over there in San Antonio. But um, when my mother had surgery, I said, I can't stay there. I came, you know, to be with her, take care of her and all that. And it's funny because I got the same infomercial here in Jersey. I said, oh, snap, you know, maybe, maybe this, this is, I'm up to something. So as I was, as you know, my mother was getting released and all that. I said, mom, don't worry, things are gonna get better. I said, look, as a matter of fact, when you get out of here, I have an event to go to in two weeks. You'll be ready by then, blah, 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 blah. You know, so, um, so we had, I told my mother, you know, everything's gonna be all right. We go to the event and there was, um, the main speaker was a guy, um, his name is John Steingrabber. And I met John when I was buying my house he Rosa Park. And I saw where John was at those days. Then when he was speaking, John was at another level. And I was like, whoa, you know, if this guy is promoting for them or speaking for them, he's doing something right. Long story short, I've never learned more in three days than I did in those three days. And my mother knew that she's never invested in my education. And she says, you know what, Charlie? Oh, mind you, I went to college and all that and a bunch of waste of money. But um, she's like, you know what, Charlie? This is what you need. Because I know that you had that burning desire when you were younger, you know, to be able to make it in real estate. But because you didn't have the true coaching, you didn't have the real help, no one to ask questions to. I think this is what she's gonna do, you know. It had a nice price tag of like 32,000. And she's like, look, just the same way you've negotiated everything in your life, this is my present to you. And she gives me 7,500. She's like, you tell them this is all you got. And for them to give you some time, and she's like, if that, you figure out the rest. So that moment, it hit me. It hit me that I said to myself, how does my mother believe more in me than I believe in myself? And that moment was when I said to myself, you know what? I really got to prove it to myself now. You know, it's not even that my mother is, is um, giving me this gift. So, you know, they always teach you OPM, other people's money. They teach you, go home, call up your credit cards, increase those limits. Yes. So that's exactly what I did. But I asked him, I said, look, I need 30 days. Please help me out. Give me 30 days. There was a buddy of mine that also went to the event, and I was like, oh, let's do this. Let's join forces, blah, blah, blah. And he says to me, he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I said, you know what? I don't need you guys. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to do it. And after that, I was part of it. Then he's like, Charles, you think we could go back on that deal? And, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to charge you more because you need to take action when you need to take the opportunity. We partnered up, you know, helped pay the bill. But I found the, the opportunity. And that's when, you know, John was the guy that said to me, you know, great guy, um, very knowledgeable. He's the one that says not how long you've been doing it, but how long you've been doing it right. That's the, the, the first part to answer yeah, your yeah. question. <laughs> so, now I'm going to answer your question. The funny thing is, I went to the same event, the same speaker, John, mm -hmm. also, right? Maybe about a year later than you, okay? Um, but I always remember that event. Always, because it was kind of like 
for me also was the you, you know how you were saying how that you've been doing it for a long time mm -hmm. so i bought real estate also back then 2008 right 2009 and but my true like what i think right my true uh start of the real estate career was not until 2017 okay you know because i didn't do it right yeah just like you were saying yeah 100 percent. you know like i don't have that yeah. house anymore either you see that so yeah. for me i think it was um uh august of 2016 is when i was part of fortune builder so now it's gonna soon to be five years um so, so prior to, to Fortune Builders, I was doing the billboards. That's another thing. Getting back to billboards, I ended up selling the billboards for a hundred and and eighty-five thousand. And this is another testimony that you know I haven't shared this with almost anybody, but I'll just you know make it public. But even in those days, after two thousand eight crash. Mm -hmm my mother couldn't afford the house she's living in so that mortgage she was you know trying to pay a little bit while she's trying to get it modified yeah. pay a little bit more trying to get it modified and you know the banks how they are mm -hmm. no we don't want this no we don't want partial payments blah, blah 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 so it forced her you know to now do a bankruptcy you know they discharge the house she will still be able to fight it but that gave her time yeah um, but the debt on that was like a hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. All right, um, hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, man, hundred sixty-five thousand. And the sad part, or the craziest part to it, is she gets a foreclosure notice, mm. and she's like, "Charlie, what are we gonna do?" And that same time, I'm closing my deal in Orlando, my billboards. Yeah. And I get a check of one eighty-five, and I say, "Mom, you know what? Take that check, just pay it all." And it's crazy because I just think of it now. Sometimes we we value materialistic things more than what we should really be for. And and it's the it's the little things that people do for us. And that's why she always told me, never let the money drive. You be driven to what you really like to do. And her house right now, it's all up to date, you know. We don't got those issues anymore. But um, you know, many people look at the stories like I don't know John that well. I don't know you guys 100%. But we look at John and I'm like, man, you know, if I was his age. <laughs> this guy, by the time he's my age, he's gonna, you know, own half the town, you know. Um, but it's like, you know, I congratulate that because we don't know the struggles people have gone to. Right. Nobody knows my story. Yes. They just say, oh, Mr. Elizabeth. Oh, this guy buys. Oh, he's cash. He's a, you know. But they don't know the struggles I've gone through. They don't know the the sleepless nights that I've had to encounter, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we know Facebook is fake book. It doesn't, it's not the real thing what people really portray. I was able to give her that check, we paid it off. And it's like my mother got her life all over because she's like at her age, 50 something years old, where's she gonna move? Right. You get used to, accustomed to a life. Uh, you can't, um, you can't be getting a job at that age after you haven't worked so many years, you know? Right. Yeah. So, I get what you uh, mean with all that, Charlie, because, like, you know, my, my parents, you know, 2007, 2008, all that stuff, like, they didn't, they stopped paying the mortgage after a decade and they got foreclosed on, I think it was maybe three years now, hmm. uh, three years ago. And, like, it was, like, the worst feeling seeing my mom cry because she, you know, basically had to lose the house mm -hmm. and uh to clarify it wasn't a foreclosure she had to short sell it okay because you know my dad was very naive and thinking oh you know it's been a decade they won't ever foreclose on us and then you know they got that notice uh here's the sheriff sale date and then then they came to me like john what are we going to do so then i you know tried helping with uh matt Marino. <laughs> shout out to him mm -hmm. but you know, again, they basically lost the house regardless. And like just a couple months back, uh, you know, they actually bought a new house in Belleville. You know, so my next step is to be able to afford to renovate it. But, you know, they got a new house in Belleville, the cheapest house in the whole town, which, you know, I'm proud to say for 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it's only two houses away from my house now. Oh, cool. So, 
<laughs> that's yeah so it's a good it's a thing good. and a bad thing mm. you know yeah basically like I, I i know that feeling you know like try, you know trying to help your parents mm. well your mother yeah. in particular yeah i mean i had i had a similar struggle you know growing up as well we had our house actually foreclosed on mm. when i was about 14 you know 13 14 and wasn't much i could do to help my parents so I totally understand where you, you, know, you guys are mm -hmm. both coming from. So, so the craziest part is this, that, you know, the, the word says, honor thy mother and thy father and you'll have longer days. But at the same time, I believe that when you do help a parent out, the blessings come bigger, you know? So that whole check that I thought, oh, Man, great, you know, I got for fortune bills, I can yeah. invest. My mother did say, look, Charlie, I, I have some sort of credit. You could put on credit cards, let's see how you could do it. And, you know, joining the program, I, w I didn't even know how I was gonna make my next credit card payment. So, when people wanna get into this business, it's not like, I'm gonna do this part-time. Oh, I'm gonna do this when I have time. Oh, I'm gonna wait for things to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you either gotta get in, like they say, burn the bridges. Yeah. But you will never be successful if you don't, if you can't do it 100%. And you know, I take my hats off to, there's guys that are in fortune builders that just do this part. And I'm like, I don't know how you guys do it. Because like, you know, on a call's notice, I could be at a house. And that's why I'll beat most of the people, you know? So I think that's, that's what it is. So I had my regimen. I was waking up at 7 a.m. At 8 in the morning, I started the curriculum at around 12 o'clock. Um, then I would take a bite. Then at one o'clock, I'll do driving for dollars from one to six. Then I'd come back home, take a bite. Then I would work on marketing. Marketing in the sense of business cards, um, door hangers. You know, I, I never was the type to bandit signs or letters. Or, you know, my most marketing is inviting people to eat, talking to them, explaining what I do with my business. So then I actually learned that the MLS gets updated at midnight. You know, but the best thing or one of the, the greatest uh, things that were taught to me by John was always have a pulse in your market. Know your market. Like those days you could have told me, oh, the address of the property, I would have even told you who listed it, how many days it's on the market, the square footage, I would have known the taxes. Like that's how much I was seeing these properties, you know, day in, day out. So it was all about driving for dollars, networking. You know, we had meetup groups, blah, blah, blah. I introduced myself. You know, I was... I was just a tall guy, but I was little in the field, you know? No, I, I, I remember, because funny thing, that's around the same time I was getting started, that I went to all the meetup groups, and you were always there, too. Yeah. Like, you were one of the people I always noticed. And I'm like, wow, man, this guy is really motivated, yeah. too. So, um, I made it my goal to be there, to be at least at one meetup group per week. And then, and then, um, then as I got busy, I said at least once a month. But then I said, you know, when the year started again, 2017, I said, you know what, I'm gonna be one, one to two a week, you know? And I had a budget for that, mind you. I started this without almost any money. So why am I trying to say this? Six weeks later, I landed my first deal. It wasn't Elizabeth, it was in North because I couldn't afford, you know? And I appreciate the guy that, actually believed in me. He wholesaled me the deal. Um, I ended up picking up for 70,000, a single family, but the ARV on that property was 260. Oh my God. So you tell me why I didn't hit a home run from day one. Mind you, I didn't have all the money to fully rehab it. So one of the things I learned from Fortune Builder was prehab, or what now you guys call wholesaling, you know? Right, yeah. um, so they always teach you always come to with three to four different strategies. In case the first one don't work, you got plan B, plan C, plan D. But you will never put anybody else's money at risk. That's what we were taught. Prehabbed it, all in for 100. Ended up selling that same property for 190. So I made $90,000 first flip. Got my money back that I invested in Fortune Builder. Now had an extra 60. So mind you, I got the 30. Paid down my credit cards to zero. So I still had that available cash, but now I'm, I wasn't paying interest. Had the 60. And from there, the rest is history, you know? That's awesome. And that's where I started, you know, um, John actually gave me the brand, Mr. Elizabeth, because after that, I bought a one house in Elizabeth. Funny story, this building you see right here is one of those. This was the first building I bought after I sold that house in North. Sight unseen, and this is a funny one. Mind you, what time did I tell you that MLS gets updated? Midnight, Midnight right? Like 12.06, and boom, I see this property pop up. I was like, oh snap, I know where this is at, you know? So I knew the guy wasn't gonna call me. Well, I was brave enough. I called the guy, the off, leave him a long voice message, so nobody else could fill that mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> I called his cell phone. Yeah. 
12, 10, 12, 11 a.m. Same thing, you know, and did my two minute span just so that nobody could else could fill that in. That's two points. I messaged him on, on my friend requested him on Facebook. I emailed him to his, you know, job. I even had his coworker, you know, who was it that I could have probably gotten towards. You're like the car warranty guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what happens at, uh, this was midnight, seven o'clock. I did the whole scene process. Guy calls me 9.05. He's like, what is it? I was like, look, thank you. This is all I wanted. I just want to let you know I'm interested in the property. I don't need to see it. I just want to meet up with you right now. And I want to put this on the contract. So this property he had it for 129 and I gave him an offer of like 125. Told him all cash. I didn't even have money. All cash. And that's another thing Fortune Builders teach you. You talk to everybody, always asking for cash. And it was my attorney that I used in those days. He's like, Charles, as a matter of fact, I just closed with a private lender yesterday. And he told me if I had more people to refer him to, to give him his card. And he gave me his card to fund this deal. So we, I get 125, then we did oil tank sweep, blah, blah, blah. Found out there, there was an oil tank. Dropped the offer to 150. Bank comes back to 124. And then um, I said to him, I said, look, with the oil tank, we'll do it at 121. And they accepted the deal. So now I know that as long as I'm holding paper, there's nobody could do nothing for me. And what made me do that craziness was number one, I knew the area. Mm -hmm. I knew the property was already worth it. Right. Like you don't find nothing, yeah. something like that. Another thing, the doctor that was here was renting it or was, was using it. So I was like, it can't so be in that, condition. yeah, it can't be in that bad of shape sure. for people to be coming in and out. Done deal. We close on it. The, the tenant is here. And I tell the guy, I was like, you know what? Now I have to charge you rent, unfortunately. He's like, oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I, <laughs> my mother, she's, a, she's very, uh, very out there sometimes. He's like, you tell that guy that he's going to pay you $3,000 I'm like, my mom, I'm always only like 1400 bucks. It don't matter. You're going to start making money. <laughs> so I said, all right, I'll tell him that. And the guy was like, and I started him off with like 3200 Oh, you crazy? My mortgage was like $1,200. You're charging me three times. I said, look, 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 look. You lost the property for a reason. You weren't paying. And they didn't take your house from one day to the other. They took it after several years. So I was like, you knew you should have been storing that money somewhere. Anyways, born and raised in New York is like that, that, that negotiating game is inside of me. And, <laughs> and long story short, he's like 2,500. I said, no, I said, all right, let's do this. If I give it to you for 2,500, let's say, where are your clients going to go now? You think that's going to happen overnight? What is it going to cost you for you to, what is it going to cost you to take out all your machines and this and that and the other? He's like, good point. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, 3,000, da, da, da. We signed the, the lease, then his AC goes out. He's like, who's paying for that? I was like, oh, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's exactly what happened here. Then this was, this was a blessing, you know? So um, this was the first commercial that I picked up from joining Fortune Builders. Nice. That's, that's crazy. So how many units do you own now? I know you've been selling off of So people. yeah, if you're asking number of doors, yeah. it's a total of 42 doors wow. that are owned as of right now. Wow. Um, and just let me la elaborate a little bit on that. There's some people that are like, oh, I need 100 doors. I need 200 doors. Yeah. And the thing is this, it all depends where you're buying, where you're getting your properties from. Because there are people that have 100 doors at $400 rent. Or there's people or guys like me that my cheapest door, my rent is like maybe $1,400, $1,500. So you see, I got like almost a three to one ratio with them, right. you know? Um, not only that, when you go to these places, yeah, you buy cheap, yeah. but your valuation goes super slow. You know, I have a property I picked up for 230. Mm -hmm. We put in like 90 into it. And right now I'm selling for 775 in a matter of three years. So if you look at that, I was like, how in the world do you go up 400,000 in less than three years. Yeah. You know, it's where you're at, your, your, your location. Yeah, so yeah, I would highly recommend people, it's not how cheap it is to get in, but how your money will be doing as well with the market and how it's going. Exactly, like there's places in Ohio that these same properties are going for 50,000 10 years later. And it's still so, like 60, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. So compared to New Jersey where, you know, just the, three years ago, you could get a shell in Newark for like 20K a door, and now it's like 100K a door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you still gotta renovate. That, that's what I say. Right now we're not fully 
occupied because you know when you start flipping you put your your passive income to the side and you want to make that quick money but the goal is this year to finalize all of our passive income uh, buildings finish them up rent them all out you know and then you know but of course we're riding the wave so once these forbearances and you know eviction start and foreclosures so there's opportunity we take the opportunities as well yeah you gotta go with the flow yeah yeah so uh with that said what um what are you looking to do towards the future now hmm. great question yeah <laughs> so um real estate was definitely a vehicle for me that i believe that I could gain my freedom back. You know, I know we spoke a little bit earlier, but if I could have done it, if I could go back to when I was 17, thinking on, oh, that's another thing. I graduated school three years, high school. So at 17, I was already out of school. If I could go back in time and money wasn't an issue, I would highly recommend people chase their dream. You know, even if that means that you want to become an auto mechanic, go do that. You know, don't go after the money. My passion, you know, which took a while to figure out uh, for me, but if I could have done it all over again, or even when my I felt like I, I was worthless, felt like garbage, I would have probably gone back into doing culinary school because I've known that that's always been my passion. You know, you talk to me about barbecues and grills and cooking and it's like, oh man, like I drop everything. I'm like, when are we doing this? You know? What I'm doing now is building the foundation, not only for, for myself, but you know, for my future family. Wanna would like to definitely be able to enjoy, you know, the future wife, the kids um, not know that I got to wake up and oh, where's my next dollar come from? Or I could go on a trip, you know, pick up, go on a trip, enjoy that time. I think that's life. You know, I'm not, I don't need a million dollars a month or a year to say I've made it. But just being able to have, you know, the opportunities to enjoy the fruit of your labor. You know, yes. because as an entrepreneur, as you know, real estate investors, we'll always continue getting deals. We'll always continue getting opportunities. Now it's the question is, are we willing to trade how we're living mm -hmm. to get back into, you know, the grind or now, like Warren Buffett says, if you put your money to work, if you don't put money to work, you're going to be working for the rest of your life. Also, basically money makes money. Or if we've built enough capital, now we could put that money to work for us, you know, instead of us having to do it. What's the time frame? My goal is at the end of this year, but who knows, might push onto a little bit into 2022. I know I've been saying it like, oh, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. <laughs> You're but... <laughs> too much of a hustle, man, to, to ever stop, I think. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. But it's a good thing, you know? But I definitely would say that, uh, you know, hopefully the end of this year, next year, I would like to try to pause. I have an amazing house that I think I've been, I've purchased in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Five bedrooms, three baths. I got a game room, living room, dining room. I got a pool in the backyard, so I think it's... You know, and I picked that up for 220, something that out here would cost me like five, 600. Um, right now it's worth like around 310, you know? So yeah, I'm paying mortgage, I'm living, I'm, well, not living, I'm, I'm here. Real estate, when you invest into real estate, it's something that just constantly increases. And location, location is everything. That's what will be my plan. Try to go back into culinary. Not that I want to open up a restaurant, but my goal is to have a, like, let's say a little food truck and do competitions. As you guys know, I'm very competitive, so. <laughs> That would be my thing, you know, see the same way I've done it in real estate, how high I could do it in, in the food industry. So, Charlie, what's the best piece of advice you'd give to someone who's getting started in real estate? Someone getting started in real estate, best piece of advice would be, number one, get yourself someone, a coach, a mentor, someone that has already um, stayed the late night hours trying to figure this stuff out. Um, mind you, what you're paying them or investing into them, because I don't look at it as a payment, but it's an investment, they will save you time and money, you know, in the sense of having to do the mistake or having to put up a wall and tear it down again. And that's costing you labor and time all over again. You know, so that would definitely be one. Number two, um, the same way I was taught is have a pulse on your market. There's a great book out there that's called Deep and Wide. A lot of people want to just branch out sideways. And there's certain people that just rather dig down deep. Mm -hmm. So the best way I can put it is know that in life we will be going through storms. Know that that deep and wide is like having a tree. And do you want, would you rather have your roots going sideways or would you rather have roots going deep down? 
So when that storm does come, you can wither it out. You know, so same thing now applies to the real estate world. There's many people chasing, 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 chasing deals, going out to Trenton, going out to Cape May, going to, you know, East, West, wherever. But you know what? There's money in your own backyard. You just got to know how to search it, how to look for it. And that's all I've done. And I think that's what's made me very successful because many people hear Elizabeth and immediately they think of Charles, you know, they're not saying, oh, Bergen County, let me call up Charles because I didn't put myself out there to be like that. Even when Joey called me, oh, where are you? Joey, you don't five minutes away from any property. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, we're here already. So that's what I said to him. You know, that was, that was easy to, you know, something's missing. Boom. I got you Home Depot and back to my property. You know, it's, it's quick. So that'd be two. I will post in your market, try to go deep instead of wide. Um, but the most important of it all, you know, have that integrity value. Because if you know your value, people can, you know, pull you to where they want to throw you or put you in a box and force you to stay there. You know, when you know your value, sometimes you saying no to someone's opportunity is really saying yes to the next bigger door that's really waiting to open up for you. That'll be my three takeaways for anybody. Once pierced, like pick, picture a bucket, picture this. Once this is pierced, no matter if I want to put plastic, I want to put a finger, there's it's that hole. It's, it's almost impossible to close it off. So um, that's what I live by, you know, stand for what you stand, believe in what you believe. And you know, if people like you, perfect. If they don't like you, then, you know, so be it. You know, there's a lot of fish still, you know, in the ocean. What's the best podcast? Like what are some podcast audio books or books that you've listened to? Okay. Um, that you enjoy? So the business that we do is real estate. How do we get our deals? Call marketing. If you do the same thing everybody does, you might get the same results as everybody that everybody's better. You go against the grain and you do stuff that's outside the box, you'll get better results like I'm doing. So one of the things that I do or a book that is highly, highly recommended to people is called Guerrilla Market. It teaches you how you do things outside the box, completely against what everybody's thinking and doing. And this is what that one idea, you know, like the guy that he says, stand in front of the train and just shake the sign and talk to people and have blank business cards with your name on it and give them out. Who's doing that? Nobody really. There's nobody doing that. Nobody. You know, that's why we were able to do things, rent stuff out quicker, mm -hmm. you know? And right there, people ask you a question, you give them the answer. That's what I do. And that's what I believe has helped me because most of my deals are all not anything else. Mm -hmm. But how do they get to me? What have I done differently that others have not done? You know? And that's why I get the phone calls. How do they reach you if somebody is looking to sell the property, you know, uh, buying property, somebody wants to ask you a question? Well, friend me on Facebook. Okay. Charles Changin is uh, my personal name. Uh, direct phone number is 908-590-6800. Message me on Messenger. Are you on Instagram? Instagram, yes. Fast Home Buyers. On Instagram, that's another th important part. People have cell phones, and if you never pick up your phone, <laughs> what tells you? To, what tells me that you're not gonna pick up a client's call or a band design or whatever you're doing for marketing? Yeah. You know, so let's add that to the list. Pick up your phone. You know, answer <laughs> your text messages, <laughs> reply to emails. You know, that's that makes you a bit more professional. It makes you stand out. Because so many people nowadays are so busy that they don't even have time to respond. You know, so that's where you could get a hold of me or email is charles at fasthomebuyersusa.com. Awesome. Charles, I want to thank you so much for, <laughs> you know, pouring your heart out to everybody and, um, you know, telling your story. Mm -hmm. um, got yeah, it, man. I, I, I didn't know how deep it went, so I really do appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So it was awesome. But guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. And thank you for watching. As always, take care. Take care, everyone. And we're out.